Chapter 8. The kids jogged toward the trees behind Moose Cabin. When they came to the fence, they vaulted over it. Once they were in the woods, Dink stopped short. What's the matter? Ruth Rose asked, catching her breath. Josh flopped on the ground. Guys, I think Mademoiselle is stealing the paintings we saw in that secret compartment in her trunk, Dink said. Stealing them, Josh asked. Dink nodded. Can you think of another reason she'd have those paintings hidden inside the trunk like that? Maybe she just doesn't want them lying around where anybody could see them, Ruth Rose said, especially that Grandma Moses, which is real valuable. Or she could be painting, she could be waiting till the paint is dry enough before she frames them, Josh put in. Dink shook his head. The paint is dry, he said. I felt it. Josh stood up and brushed pine needles from his knees. Well... What should we do? I don't know, Dink said, but I'm going to keep my eye on her. And that trunk. Ruth Rose looked at her watch. We have three minutes to get to the picnic table, she said. Detective Rob will be waiting for us. Maybe we should tell him about what we saw in the trunk, Josh said. I don't know, Dink said. I could be wrong. Anyway, we better get over there. The kids jogged to the picnic tables and found places to sit. Everyone else was there. Mademoiselle Mousse was standing next to Detective Rob. So how many of you have followed your card clues and found the map pieces? Detective Rob asked. Almost every hand went up. Only a couple of kids, including Josh, had not been successful yet. Okay, maybe you can find them later today, Detective Rob said. He turned to Mademoiselle Mousse. In case you haven't met her yet, this is Mademoiselle Mousse. She has a fascinating job. She cleans and restores old paintings, he said. She lives in France, but was hired by the Darbys to come here and clean their paintings. She has seen thousands of signatures, and some of them have been forged, right, Mademoiselle? She bowed her head. There are many clever foragers out there, she said. Will you tell the kids how you can tell the difference between a real signature and a forged one, Detective Rob asked? Of course, she said. There are four things to look for. Dink noticed that she was still wearing white, white latex gloves when she raised one finger. First, study the overall look of the signature, Mademoiselle went on. You may not be able to say exactly what it is, but there is something different about this signature. She held up a second finger. Next, the length of the signature. Each time we sign our name, our signature is almost exactly the same length. Try it sometime. But forged signatures are often shorter or longer than the actual signature. She went on to describe how a forger will lift his pen off the paper as he studies the signature he's trying to copy. When the forger puts his pen back on the paper, he leaves a tiny space. Sometimes, she went on, there will be a space and a tiny ink blot if the forger is using a ballpoint pen. Mademoiselle held up her fourth finger. Most foragers are nervous, she said with a little smile. Their hand trembles as they are forging a, a name. Experts can spot signs of these hand tremors. She told Detective Rob that she had work to do. The kids all clapped and she disappeared into the house. How would you like to see if you can pick out a forged signature? So here's Mademoiselle and she's talking. There's Detective Rob letting the kids know about forging. Signature, remember when you forge a signature, it means that you are writing someone else's signature without their permission. You're not supposed to do that. Cool, one of the bear cabin boys said. Detective Rob passed out a sheet of paper and a pencil to everyone. Each sheet was covered with signatures. In each row of three signatures, two are real and one is forgery, Detective Rob said. Circle the one you think is fake. Dink glanced down at his paper. He saw George Washington, Elvis Presley, and a bunch of other famous names. He looked for spaces between letters and tiny blots of ink. In this George Washington row, he circled the one signature that was shorter than the other two. After five minutes, Detective Rob asked the kids to stop. Now, I'd like you to try forging a signature. Pick any name on your paper and try to copy it exactly. I think you'll find it's pretty difficult. Detective Rob walked around and looked at the kids' papers. Say, that's an excellent replica of Abe Lincoln's signature, he said as he walked past Josh. I'll bet you draw or paint, am I right? 
Josh nodded. I like to draw a lot, he said. I thought so, Detective Rob said. You'd make a good forger. Hey, Josh, forge me a check for a million dollars, Brendan called out. Everyone laughed except Dink. He put his pencil down next to his paper. He thought that he had been buzzing, that the thought that had been buzzing in his brain like a bee in a bottle finally surfaced. It's almost 11.30, Detective Rob called out. We have to stop now. Tomorrow, I'll show you how to find and lift fingerprints. Don't leave yet, Dink said quietly to Josh and Ruth Rose. The three of them stayed seated while the rest of the kids wandered toward the cabin. Detective Rob picked up his coffee mug and went into the kitchen. Josh looked at Dink. What's going on? You look like you sat on a tack. I figured out how Madame Wasson was say is stealing the paintings, Dink said very quietly. I think she's making copies of them and keeping the real ones. Josh and Ruth Rose just stared at him. What do you mean? How do you know? asked Ruth Rose. I can't prove it, but listen, Dink said. He started by telling Josh and Ruth Rose about the yellow paint he'd gotten on his pajama sleeve. When we snuck in to return the ring last night, I looked at the painting she left under the towel. I must have dragged my sleeve across it, Dink said. The paint was still wet. We thought that was the real Grandma Moses painting, but I think it was a copy that Madame Moussel Moussé painted. I think she hid the real one inside the hollow trunk of the door of the trunk. We just saw it there. So where's the copy, Josh asked. Dink remembered the stack of framed faux paintings on the sofa. I think it's in the great room waiting to be hung on the wall, he said. When the Darbys see it, they'll think it's the real one. They'd never even know the difference, Ruth Rose said. They just think she did an excellent job of cleaning it. Dink nodded. Remember how Mademoiselle Mosse told us Grandma Moses painted on fiberboard? Dink asked. Well, my dad uses fiberboard for projects. It's really hard stuff. He has to cut it with a power saw. The painting we saw under the towel had really smooth edges, like it was cut with a modern saw. But the painting inside the trunk door had rough edges, like they were cut by an old person with a handsaw. <gasps> what a scam, Josh said. I'll bet she looked up at all the Jarvis paintings in that book of hers. When she found ones that were valuable, she made copies and hid the real ones in the trunk door. Detective Rob walked out of the kitchen with a fresh mug of coffee. You three look like you're up to something, he joked. Dink made up his mind. Detective Rob, let me tell you something. It's um pretty bad. The detective nodded and sat on the kid's bench. Of course, what's bothering you? Dink repeated everything he, Josh, and Ruth Rose had talked about. When he got to the part about finding the paintings inside the hollow trunk door, Detective Rob raised his eyebrows. Have you told anyone else your suspicions, he asked Dink. Dink shook his head. He felt better now that he'd told someone, but his heartbeat was still racing. This is a serious accusation, the detective went on. So an accusation is when you are saying that you think someone did something. You're accusing them of that. Still, I can see how it's possible, Mademoiselle Mosse told me. She was a painter first, then turned to art restoration. When she realized that the Darbys owned some valuable paintings, maybe she couldn't resist the chance to make some easy money. Do you think she was planning to sell the painting she hid, Josh asked. Detective Rob nodded. More than likely, there are plenty of art buyers who don't care where paintings have come from, he said, standing up. Don't tell anyone else what we've talked about. I have to make a call and put some things in place. Then I'll have a talk with Mademoiselle Mousse. Detective Rob looked down at the kids and stay out of the lodge, he said.